morning, my friends from Hemp Engineering from all around the world. Today, we're going to be talking to Mrs. Heather Rubiales. She is the founder of um, this beautiful company, Heather's Hemp Alternative. She has been working in the packaging uh, space and we're gonna be talking about the upcoming packaging expo uh, in the 11th of June. Hello, Heather, welcome to Hemp Engineering. Hi, Ramon, thanks for having me. It's a great pleasure, my friend. Look, I've been reading about your, your bachelors of science and all your work and mind blowing and you're so young. Tell us how did you end up in the hemp business? Yeah, so well, I've been in the cannabis industry actually for for the last twelve years um, since two thousand and nine. That's when I first stepped into the cannabis industry. Um, but that's what also when I found out about the industrial hemp world and uh, you know the, all the benefits and the magnificent uses of of hemp um, after reading the Jack Herrera's book, uh, The Emperor Wears No Clothes. So that was back in you know 2009, back when I was back in college, uh, getting my degree. Um, so I, but I that you know it wasn't going to be until 10 years later that I actually um, decided to create, get back into the industrial passion of mine, and create a and create a startup, a company. Um, and so. But it really stemmed from the plastic waste issue I was seeing within the cannabis industry itself, right? Um, I live here up in, in Northern California, and it's a little um, uh, uh, county called Humboldt, Humboldt County. And this is basically the, well, I guess you would say the Napa Valley of cannabis processing in all the United States. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's <amazing>. <laughs> We have a lot, a lot of, a lot of, of cannabis that comes through through this area. Um, so I've been on the multiple farms, um, regenerative, sustainable cannabis farms, um, and what I was seeing them struggle with was being able to tell that story, right? Being able to tell their eco mission, their regenerative, sustainable story um, to their customers. Um, that were buying their their products at the dispensaries or the stores, um, because uh, you know a lot of the times the, these the, their customers aren't coming to the farms, right? And they they don't get to see how regenerative or sustainable they are in their practices throughout their cultivation. Um, so packaging is really one of the main ways that these brands, these especially the cannabis brands can tell their story, right? It's through packaging, it, especially that, to tell that eco mission story. Um, so I, and I also, after reading Jack Herr's book, um, you know, just was so fired up about utilizing petroleum-based products in an industry, particularly that, um, that industry demonized this industry for right i mean it's, it's, it's this whole circle and it's it's very ironic um yes. and hip and uh, i don't know what you would say there's there's this word uh i can't think of it it's on the tip of my tongue um but i all i could say is ironic right we're we're supporting an industry which is the petroleum industry in vast amounts with all of our packaging because again especially within the cannabis industry it's we have these regulations that have set forth that says every individual product sold must be sold in a child resistant container right yes so every pound right every pound of cannabis being sold you're you're talking hundreds of containers for just every pound right so this is the numbers um that come out of this are skyrocketing right and with one of the fastest growing industries in the world, you're talking just drastic amounts of, of, of plastics and used waste coming from this an industry, right? Yes. And so what, how we have such a huge opportunity, this industry does to utilize our own waste, utilizing our own waste to create our products, right? All the way from packaging 
to cultivation. That's my goal, right? So this is really how I got stepped into this was this passion, this fire of we cannot be utilizing petroleum-based products anymore, especially mm-hmm. in this industry. We mm-hmm. need to be utilizing our own waste, right? Um, and I looked to, to hemp to do that. Um, if we can utilize our own waste in the cannabis industry, that's down the line. That could be a thing. But for now, I, I you look to, okay, how can we solve this plastic waste issue we're seeing in the cannabis industry? Well, let's utilize industrial hemp to do so, right? Um, but I want to uh, uh, initiate here too, is that we're not just going to be a, a packaging company. That's why it's Heather's Hemp Alternatives and not Heather's Hemp Packaging, because we really want to step in and and provide products all the way from cultivation to packaging and really bring this new element to what sustainable regenerative cannabis looks like. You know, we can be organic, we could be, um, oh, they call it craft, the no-till, um, dry farmed, and they're all, there's all these names, right? But what about going plastic free, right? And that's a new thing I wanted to bring in and utilizing our own, our own ways to do that. And I believe that that's the proper um, path to, to travel because we want to, we want, we want to be different in a way that um, our products bring not only love and peace to everyone that is touching them, it's bringing the proper health to kids that are, that are needing alternative medicine. But more important is that the packaging itself have to be um, environmentally friendly. Um, Heather, I think the right word of, uh, of irony is paradox. Paradox, yes, that's a great one, yes. Yeah, it's a big paradox because it, it, it confronts us a reality that is that most corporations on earth that have been living off from the prohibition are actually destroying the planet. While the only answer and the true solution that we have at hand is being forbidden. So um, it is it's a paradox. Actually, it's a paradox. <laughs> Heather, what are your expectations in this upcoming expo? Well, I don't have, I don't like to set too much expectations for things because you always get to, that's how you get disappointed. But I would love to, um, you know, just network with other hemp as I like to call them. Um, That's always my goal, you know, and networking, networking, networking right now and being able to be in the same room with a bunch of other like-minded people that are just, that are all about the hemp is, is in itself um amazing so i would love to you know um learn about new innovations that others are doing yeah we were talking that you are expecting to network and tell you heather there are not many companies in the world that are doing what you're doing it has taken me a long it has been very complicated to get uh, Uh, it's a long world out there as a, sometimes you know pioneering and especially in hemp bioplastic space you know we have a lot of innovation coming out and um a lot of more companies within the hemp crete space um i would say uh, the hemp wood space but in terms of the hemp bio space i think it's hemp bioplastic space it's still such an infant it's such an infancy stage i agree um, with you, you know? I agree. um and i feel that i'm trying my best as to bring the best product I can out at, at this time with what, with what we have. Um, but I foresee, I mean, I, there's still so much we need to do um, within within the hemp bioplastic space. I mean, I could talk for days about it, but um, you know, I see a lot of greenwashing within the hemp bioplastic space. I, um, I was really, you know, I'm a vi- environmentalist before I became an entrepreneur, to be honest. Yeah, I saw you. Your, your, your. <laughs> I became an entrepreneur because of my passion for the environment. But uh, it really, 
it really does tug on my uh tug on me or in or kind of makes me uh frustrated to see the the all the greenwashing happening within the hemp bioplastic space and so i think that if we are going to be going this route um we need to be going a truly full circle loop you know um, creating a full circular economy with our hemp packaging and that's you know in mixing it with fossil fuels um still doesn't necessarily go that route right so i think that if we can really dive 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 deep and create a biopolymer itself that's derived from the hemp plant adding that to the hemp herds or fibers, creating 100% hemp bioresin, now we have changed the game. And Amazing. that's what we need to do. That's in, that will actually bring our costs down, right? Because it's not the hemp that is expensive within the hemp bioresin. It is the polymer that is expensive. And we are using a very high bio-based polymer that is, well, supposedly marine and backyard compostable is what it, it's it's meant to, to do. So is him base. What's that? Is is your resin him base? So the resin is hemp based. So oh, wow. yes, it's a, it's hemp, it's reinforced um, with the hemp fibers, but the polymer is a bio-based polymer. But that, that's where we need to really derive that polymer from the hemp plant, right, right. itself. Right. And then and then reinforce it still with the hemp herds and, or, or the fibers, um, which, were, which, which can be micronized. But again, we are still limited to injection molding, right? Yes. We haven't been able to create a resin that's blow moldable. If we can create a resin that's blow multiple, now that's going to totally change the game too. So there's two, there's a couple things that that's blocking us from from moving in, in certain ways. Well, and I'm happy that we share similar careers. I'm also yeah. I'm an environmental engineer, um, although I never actually exercised that uh, career. I, I, I basically quit 25 years of designing and building oil and gas uh, installations around the world until I met, uh, I went to NOCO 2016. I, I, I saw what him was able to do and I changed my career just like that. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. That's so great. I went to NOCO for the first time this year. It was, it was great. My dad lives in Aurora, so. Um, yeah, I was I was able to go and yeah, it was I was great. That's yes, so funny. It was great. Heather, we cannot avoid the political aspects of our business because we are under the umbrella or the shadow of of the provision. What message would you send to the the, the, the decision makers? Ah, the decision makers. To who are, who are those? Politicians. <laughs> oh, oh you know, this may, you know, this may even, uh, uh, I would definitely talk about taxes in terms of the cannabis industry. That would be something I would definitely do. Um, I would also implement rules against utilizing um, metric tags because here in California, every plant has to be tagged with these little plastic tags. Oh, yeah. so you're thousands and thousands. And so I would implement um, measures on waste, um, especially in, in the recycling of the cannabis waste because we have strict regulations surrounding that. That's a very good idea, I'm telling you. That's a very good idea that will avoid an, an unnecessary tracking that at the end of the day, you know. Is... It's wasteful and costs time and money. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, and that is some money that goes to the oil and gas industry more than anyone else. So they are the ones who are, you know, happy with that kind of practice. Oh, I, I, I honestly think that the oil and gas industry were behind the regulations surrounding cannabis packaging. I mean, no doubt in my mind that they of were. Course. Of course, of course. So it's a, so 
a lot of industries that are getting the benefit of the prohibition, including the cotton, including the, the cutting trees and you name it. All major corporations on earth are the ones who are benefit, getting the benefit from the prohibition. And they don't want this to happen. That's why we need warriors such as yourself and keep fighting for it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Keep Congratulations, Heather. Congratulations, you're very happy and I'm looking forward to your presentation in this expo. You never know what can happen after that with your product is basically needed it all around the world. Um, yes, you, you never know. <laughs> you never know. That's why it's all about going to meet and getting, getting, um, getting in the, I don't know, getting in the ocean with all the fishes. <laughs> when I see you, your jaw, your beauty, your mind, uh, I see that uh, there is a future a big future in our in, the, in our industry because realistically speaking, most of the CEOs of the emerge in this emergency emerging uh, industry are all hippies over sixty years old. And it's not about that, including myself. Come on, I'm sixty years old. All we are doing just preparing the the land and get the seats uh, so so we can in the near future see people such as yourself grow um, and conquer the world because that's what we need in this moment. That's what we need. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Congratulations, Heather. It's a great pleasure having you with us. I'll see you soon. And love and peace. <laughs> Sounds good. Bye.